Hello, welcome to the Dwarven Forge Build of the Month for June of 2020, and this is Node Stone Unturned. We built this with four of our City Builder sets. It's one stone cottage set, one stone starter set, one slate roof set, and one Wicked City Editions pack. And all four of these sets are available as a bundle, the Build of the Month bundle, on our website with a bonus gift card. So what's cool about this build that we did this month is we're using the same pieces to build three different locations. You can quickly change them over in about a minute between each thing, uh, as you'll see in the story. So the story, speaking of, is it's a time of great change. It's a celestial convergence, right? So a, an aged archaeologist comes to the players and says, listen, a great evil will break into this world unless four elemental node stones, thus the node stone unturned, are uncovered. So they have to go find them. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so the players are approached by an aged old archaeologist, and she tells them that she desperately needs help. She's been studying the signs, and there's a great celestial convergence coming. She believes that there is a, a distant ruins from which magical treasures, elemental nodes, these stones that have been removed from the ruins, and they locked in some sort of ancient great evil. And she thinks it's going to break forth unless the players can uh, help her round up these four elemental nodes and seal the thing in there before the stars all align. So this little archaeologist lady is going to come with them. She, uh, she hires them. She's gathered together her life savings from... She's a best-selling uh, best author, this archaeologist. You could, and she carries her water bucket everywhere for whatever reason. So she hires the adventurers to take her out to the homesteads that are surrounding these ruins. Because she believes that they have harvested the stones from the ruins. They're easy stones to build your houses with. And among them, she believes the elemental nodes are there. And she can identify them by touch. Touch, 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 touch me but she needs to get in there and inspect them. And she's, she's old and relatively defenseless and needs the players to escort her around and find the stuff. So you can give the players the choice of three different locations to go to, uh, which is fun because they, they can figure out how they want to proceed. The idea is you build each one using the same pieces you just rearrange. It should take like about a minute or less to just change over the sets. You could riff, you could make more in locations if you wanted to and have them go to some dead ends, some red herrings. For the sake, we're just going to do with the three that actually have the nodes. And let's say, because we've already built it here, that they're first going to go to this little farm stand. So this is the homestead number one. So when the players approach, doo -doo 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 -doo, here comes the brave rabbit and Gary Gygax and their elderly archaeologist ward here. They're going to see this farm stand is set up where there's a, uh, a farmer and his wife, but they're more merchants than farmers, right? They maybe started with a small farm and then were bartering for their neighbors. And like, yeah, at this point, they're kind of the place where all the local farms come and they buy the produce cheap and then they sell it expensively. But it's the one stop shop. Everybody got to come here because they have everything. So they are uh, also, you know, they're they're sort of they're homesteaders way out in the uh, out in the frontier. And they're a little wary of, uh, of outsiders, of strangers, of, you know, coming, poking around. Also, when the players arrive, there's a, there's a cart, a very fine-looking cart, over here with some horses. And this guy here is over, he's buying some produce or whatever from the, uh, the farm stand when they approach. So we have basically two buildings set up. This is like a smaller storage shed. This is sort of where they live. And, of course, the big noteworthy thing in this area is... There's a fountain in the middle. This is like a, you know, they're, they're just trying to make ends meet, and they have this kind of majestic, ridiculous fountain. The farmer and his wife don't really want to talk to the players. Uh, they're also trying to make a sale, and they'll be kind of annoyed if the players try to break up the sale. Hopefully, they'll, you know, they'll complete the sale. This guy's going to kind of get ready to go, and they can, they'll talk to the players while he's loading up his stuff or whatever. They're, they're in it for the cash, right? They are merchants. So if the players are like, hey, we want to poke around and look for these ancient elemental nodes, yada, 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 they'll say, listen, what's in it for me? Like, they're, they're going to charge, they're going to smell gold on the players, right? So they're going to ask for a high amount if they let the players snoop around and say it's going to hold up business, et cetera, et cetera. Although, actually, she's going to recognize this is, uh, it's the work of, you know, the ancient uh, ruins, the, this fountain, this very distinct and majestic. So maybe at some point she'll, she'll poke around over here and sort of tell the players that, hey, I think this is, uh, this is where we need to go. And as soon as she starts trying to identify, maybe this, maybe it's this pheasant, right? We put it up all the way up the top here and she's like, this lady's like, she's like three feet tall. Maybe she's five feet. She's 
she's little. So they, they have to figure out a way to get her up there. Or maybe she's riding on the back of the rabbit. As soon as she starts messing with the stone, it's going to sort of trigger the elemental energy that's, that's trapped within. Uh, it's going to sort of set this wave, and an elemental is going to come out of here. It'll be maybe right at this guy. He's just loaded up his stuff, and he's starting to hunt out. So the elemental is going to come out of here. Because they attack a innocent bystander immediately, so the, the players should really feel like they've got to do something about it. Plus, they're going to be the next thing in line. Plus, these guys are freaking out because now there's like an elemental in the middle of their farm stand, whatever. So we can have a nice little combat center around here. And uh, for fun, we've got these little water barrels. One two, three. It can draw water to it from one of these barrels and uh, heal up some hit points or something. So if the players like smash the barrels, that'll, uh, they can stop the elemental from healing. And then after the combat, we, they can have some more tense negotiations with the two merchants because now they are, uh, they're angry that there's been violence and maybe the players smashed their fountain and they scared off their business and yada yada. They're really ungrateful merchants. And then of course the, uh, the archaeologist is going to want to take the nodes and they're going to have to negotiate for that. This guy, if they save uh, his life, he could give them a ride in his cart. I say, hey, where are, you, where are your strangers headed? They can head to the next encounter in, in class. So I uh, quickly rearranged a build into our second build here. This is homestead number two. And it's, you know, something else you can give your players a second to go get a snack or whatever. But I think you could probably do it in about a minute at the game table without uh, losing too much momentum. So we have this, we have the whole build here, and then we have a, a, a cellar bit that we'll reveal later. We'll pop that in. So it's, it's waiting in the wings. The players hitch a ride with the uh, farmer who was buying stuff at the other stand. And while they're riding along in his cart, you can tell him this is an apo local apothecary. He'll drop him off and then be on his way. So the players come. They'll be greeted by this angry old apothecary, grumpy old man. If they push him, if they're like, listen, maybe he'll maybe begrudgingly let them into this kind of showroom here, right? So they can get in here and talk, but the apothecary really wants them out. He's like, no, there's nothing to see here. You can peruse my herbs and my wares, but I have to get back to work. You're on your way, on your way, rah, rah, rah. When the conversation kind of gets, gets a low or there's not making any headway, you can do two things. One, you make the players make a con save, because there are, are poisonous vapors sort of seeping in from beyond this door. And two, they can hear a cry for help. Whoever's got the highest uh, perception hears a cry for help, which should obviously set the players off. So if they fail the con save, let's say they get poisoned. And then, of course, they'll probably start pressing the uh, apothecary. What was that? Uh, and it's like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't hear anything. What are you talking about? You guys are uh, crazy. You got to you know, stall. And eventually he'll make a break. Uh, for the door, try and run in here, maybe slam it closed. Probably the players will barge in. But here it sort of looks like more of a storeroom. Astute players might notice that there are crates and the like put over a trap door in the corner here. If they sort of press this guy, he'll transform into a beast because he is not an apothecary, he is a druid. Uh, and at the same time, he'll let an animal warm. <laughs> trap door will burst open and out will come another druid. <laughs> also, in beast form, and a cool combat should ensue. Archaeologists will be like, oh, I'm out of here. Uh, and it's nice, tight quarters, so it could be a really lively combat. Uh, maybe someone will try and jump out the window. You can break some crates, whatever. Things start going badly for the druids. Uh, they'll try and retreat down into the trap door. If the players fight their way down, do, 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 down the stairs here, uh, they, they can make a of a valiant battle against the druids down here, and they will discover the true apothecary. They have this non-binary apothecary here, and they've been tied up and hastily uh, gagged. Uh, so they, they weren't well gagged, that's why they were able to yell for help. Players can hopefully defeat the druids, and then they can speak with this poor apothecary. The apothecary will tell the tale. They were uh, they were working away, as usual, in these, these wild-eyed, uh, druids burst in and captured them, and the the druids said something. It was like the portents said it was the time. It was time that the elements would retake all the land. Tied up the apothecary and demanded to know the secrets of the stone. And the apothecary relented and told them the source of magical power was down here. So sure enough, this stone right here, the stone. this big one. This is the air elemental node, and uh, the apothecary had harvested it. 
uh, themselves from the ruins. They felt magic in it, and they put it in the walls, and this is where they do all of their big magic. So the, the druids were harnessing it, and they were creating a nature bond. They were taking all the, the apothecary stuff, and they were creating this, this crazy ritual. They were harnessing the power of the stone, and it was going to explode like a kind of a combination of control weather and entangle a cloud of insects or some just a terrible thing to sort of destroy all civilization and um, have nature sort of instantly overrun everything. So luckily the players have foiled that plot and they've liberated the apothecary. Oh, and that's why, so the activated uh, stone that's been creating uh, this weird, this strange, these vapors that have uh, helped drive the, the druids even more mad. The apothecary, they're immune. They have like whatever, they're, they've been exposed to so many things, they're immune, but the, that's why the players are getting hit with it. And as thanks for being liberated, the apothecary will give the players a variety of potions and salves and balms and maybe a magic item or something cool. And, and then on they can go doo -doo 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 -doo, to the third homestead. All right, we're going to rebuild this into homestead number three. Let's see how fast we can do this. So our intrepid minis approach uh, when they get about 600 feet away in the range of a longbow. An arrow streaks out and lands at their feet. And a voice yells out, Don't get any closer! The end times are here! And so they, they can see this homestead. This is kind of a crazy looking house, right? It's one tall, tall, like, just tower of a house. This is a, basically a bunker that a survivalist, she built this thing. And she is cooped up. She's in the top here. She's whoop. There she is hanging out with her longbow. And she wants to keep them at bay. So she's got a bucket of arrows and is just going to keep firing at them if they get close. So they're probably, maybe they'll try and parlay Bye. with her. But she's convinced that the end is here. The world is on fire. Nothing good is afoot. Nobody gets near her supplies. She's holed up and she's going to just outlive the end times here. So maybe the players start talking her down and talk some sense into her. Maybe they hide their weapons and they can approach a little bit. At some point, what's dramatically interesting, this huge blast of fire emanates from uh, the top of this tower somewhere, uh, scorching the earth all around. Maybe if the players are close enough, it hits them. But sure enough, it, it certainly seems like the world's on fire if you're in that tower, because there literally is fire shooting out of the tower. Gee, that must be the work of the elemental fire node. Maybe they maybe they can approach. There's going to be some blasts of fire. Great for those tieflings. Uh, if they get close enough, they can kind of get out of longbow range. The survivalists can't shoot really from out here so well. Unless she leans out the window, then she might. she's vulnerable and she might fall. So they can get really close to the building. And if they walk all the way around, let's, I'm going to rotate it around so we can see. There's a door. There's doors on the side of the building here. And then there's, whoop, there's a door around the back side here. So they can, that one is locked. If they want, they can kind of, they can kick the door in or whatever. And inside, they will find, uh, it's essentially, it's a storeroom. And there's no way up. Right, it's just solid floor above. It's a storm. It's essentially like a, a root cellar, right? And but there's no there's no real perishable goods in there. Um, it's basically a bunch of supplies, um, building supplies and the like. So the entrance into this place is up here on the second floor. So when they've kind of gotten to this point and they're realizing that there's a couple of doors up here, maybe if they're looking out and looking down. Our friend, the survivalist, will come on over here, kick this door open. Up here, she's got a door on the third floor, and it can start pouring out water buckets, maybe, maybe it's water barrels, maybe it's acid, maybe it's oil of slipperiness. So she's gonna start pouring those out, close this, to try and keep them away. She is definitely, uh, she's holed up here, for good reason. So then, just when they think things couldn't get worse or more interesting, there's a kind of a crazy sound over the hill behind them. And what appears on the rise? The cart comes barreling over the hill at breakneck speed. It has no horses. It's just moving of its own accord. And it barrels straight towards the players. Uh, maybe it hits them. Ooh, it's got this little, uh, it's like a man catcher in the front here. Get them against the wall. It'll smash them against the wall and starts attacking them. It's an animated object. So they have to battle off the, uh, the cart. And then, of course, running off over the hill, chasing the cart is the, uh, the guy that gave them a ride earlier. So it turns out he had the Earth Elemental node, and when he got back, he'd sort of he'd been talking with them and the archaeologist, and looking at he was looking at these weird old curios he had from the ruins, and he had the Earth Elemental node. He realized it. He he pulled it out, 
Uh, he thought it might be interesting to the players and loaded it into his cart and something triggered and it went nuts and it's now possessed the cart. It's an uh, animated object powered by power of Earth and it's driving around going bonkers. And of course, for whatever reason, it's attacking the players because why not? It's fun, right? So they get to try and battle a cart. I don't even know how you, how do you defeat a cart? Throw that one in the comments. How does one defeat a angry animated cart? So they're battling this thing. Maybe the survivalist is continuing to pepper them with arrows and oil and whatnot. Or maybe the survivalist is just watching the show at this point because it's like kind of bonkers, right? Have you ever seen an angry animated cart uh, attacking people? Uh, hopefully they, find, they can defeat the cart. And once again, their friend, the farmer, says, you know, thank you, save me. Maybe he'll give them, maybe he'll gift them his cart as thanks. And maybe it still has residual magics. Maybe it's now an animated uh, cart. It's a sentient cart. They can uh, tell it to drive around. And that would be kind of a neat, uh, they at least get something out of it. Also, then they could maybe use this cart to gain entrance in here, much to the uh, chagrin of our survivalist. If they do go in there, we can pop these levels out to work it one layer at a time. They find in here, uh, there's all sorts of supplies, foodstuffs, rations, all sorts of, all the supplies you need, food and water and the like, to survive for probably like six months for a single person. Everything from powdered butter to uh, lots of good water. Um, and then if they head up the stairs, they find the next floor is up here. This is where the survivalist was throwing down the buckets of whatever it was. And then there's a trap door up here whoop, where a survivalist is, uh, and she's pulled the ladder up. This is the same ladder that she uses out here to get in the front door. She's pulled the ladder up. She'll slam the trap door shut. She'll stand on it, and she'll tell them to get away, and it's the end times. They can have a dialogue with her and say, hey, listen, no, no, we're going to stop the end times. We're stopping, like, it's whatever. They can If they can try to explain to her that sh there's an elemental node of fire in her bunker here. If they're able to defuse all of this, they can uh, stop the, the end times. So they can you know, do some fun social interaction, eventually, hopefully, talk their way in. She can maybe let them up. And the top of the tower here, they see this cool corner post. This is the elemental note of fire. And maybe when they're up here, they're trying to figure it out, and poof, there's another blast of fire, and they see it's coming from the outside, so then they have to, the archaeologist has to, like, go out the window and uh, touch the thing and deactivate it. It could be fun. And they can harness that last one and get the heck out of here and save the day. And that was Node Stone Unturned. I hope you thought that three linked encounters built with the same pieces and rebuilt really rocked. And that awakened cart, it really speaks for itself, doesn't it? Uh. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any more quality content like this. And speaking of content, we did this whole thing live on our Twitch channel, Dwarven Forge Live. If you follow us on social, you'll hear all about that and everything else in the world of Dwarven Forge. So that's it for now. And I have to tell you that we're going to take a several month hiatus Aww. from Build of the Month to work on our new Wildlands Kickstarter, which we can't wait to reveal. It's coming very, very, very soon. And we'll be releasing a ton of content during that, so there'll be lots of stuff on this channel. And then we'll be back in the fall with Build of the Month again. So until that time, thank you for watching. We'll see you in Wildlands. And now, it's back to the anvil. This way.